Hi, my name is Ford Shankle. Welcome to today's program. I think that if you recreate along a river, or if you own property along a river, you will find today's program very enlightening. If you have property across from a national forest, as I do, the Allegheny National Forest in Warren County in northwestern Pennsylvania, or if you happen to have, as I do, the distinction of owning property in a river area, a basin that was declared wild and scenic. Now, the good part about it is the environment is protected. The difficult thing for property owners is that if you want to improve the riverbank, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get there. I did this with another property owner just down river from me. It took two and a half years to get the permit to do the construction and about another year and a half to get the construction finished. But it was worth it. And that is what we are going to show in today's program. So stick around. I think you'll find it interesting. The Allegheny National Forest covers thousands of acres of forest and recreation land in the northwest part of Pennsylvania, with the Allegheny River defining its western edge. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the Allegheny has been identified as a wild and scenic river, affording it a great deal of environmental protection along with the protection of endangered species. That is what this video presentation is all about, an overview of a federal and private collaboration to create a template of sorts for future riverbank stabilization projects. We have seen nearly 50 feet of riverbank erode since my grandfather built our cabin in 1955. Some years there was minimal loss with less high water. Some years three or four feet of bank would be torn away when ice jams would suddenly move out. This was especially true in the 1970s when the ice froze to a thickness of more than two feet. We were becoming wary of the fact that further erosion of our bank would mean the loss of some very large and very old maple and sycamore trees. That is what prompted us to contact the Forest Service to investigate what we would be needing to do to begin securing permission to stabilize our bank. The first step in beginning a riverbank stabilization project is locating a capable, informed, and experienced contractor. In the instance shown here, Craig Snavely of Snavely Construction from Tidiute, Pennsylvania was contracted. Craig understands how important it is to locate purchase and haul the hundreds of tons of rock necessary to complete a project such as this involving the rehabilitation of 100 feet of river frontage. Implementation of a project such as this is recommended to begin in July, August, or September. Because of an unusual amount of rainfall during late summer, the project had to be completed in late September since releases from the Kinzua Dam were above average, causing irregular rising and falling of river stages. Due to the close proximity of the project to the Allegheny River, the excavation work had to be performed from the top of the bank. The bank was regraded to a slope of between 2 to 1 and 3 to 1 contingent upon the nature of each specific segment. Access to the floodplain and the riverbank meant that we had to have Craig extend our driveway by building a switchback type access road above the cabin. There was not much room for getting the large dump truck and backhoe down to the river. To complicate matters because of a natural spring running directly in the path of our access road and because of the just mentioned unusual rainy season, Craig had to use some of the large rocks he had hauled in to create a firmer base for passage of the tractor to the river. Luckily he had anticipated the problem and had hauled in more rocks than were needed for the riverbank itself. Topsoil and other materials needed later for sustaining plant growth that are generated from the excavation activity were saved and stockpiled to the side as Craig dug. The excavation was begun by creating a key at the base of the bank. The key created a ridge that prevented the stone used to armor the bank from sliding into the water. The stone armor, as it is called, was installed up to the point where evident scouring effects of the flowing water and ice were minimal. This practice increases the chances of the permanent vegetation taking hold. In addition to the structural concerns of placing the large two feet to seven feet wide and at least one foot thick rocks in the proper places, we had the discretion to have them placed in such a way that the future launching of canoes, rowboats, and or other suitable vessels can be performed. 
The access point of the bank from the aforementioned launchings is characterized in the permit as a footpath that does not impede the river's natural flow. Well, there you have it. Riverbank stabilization is expensive, costing from $25 to $200 per foot, depending on a whole host of impediments. The permitting and actual construction can take up to two or three years, but in the end, a beautiful river is preserved for future generations. A great gift to our children, grandchildren, and those beyond. Thank you for watching today's program. If you found it interesting and would like more information about my project, just use the dialog box on the YouTube page, and I would be glad to get back to you. Again, thanks for watching. See you again sometime.